Well, hello YouTube land. Long time no see. I'm uh, finally back from deployment. It's uh, been a while. Nine months. <sighs> so, if you're still around, thank you very much for waiting for me to get back. <sighs> Long story short, we went through some shit. And by went through some shit, I meant we got shot at a lot. <sighs> Came close to factory resetting the Houthis, but, uh, yep, still a work in progress. <laughs> uh, but that deployment was long. I got back last week and I just had to shut it all down for a little while. So, what's next? At this point, I'm actually about to move, so no cars for foreseeable future. Uh, maybe a few there. I'm going to post a few like Navy videos just to uh, keep you guys entertained and some stories. Uh, but, yeah, for right now, the only car I've left is that Taurus, and that thing's going back up to the auctions. Because of that double extension, uh, I got no time left. I move next month, so. <laughs> Nothing I can do, uh, unfortunately. My buddy already knows he's the proper owner. I'm just doing the work for it. But, it is what it is. Hmm. So, let me tell you about what happened. So, the underway started off real nicely. Uh, we first port was, uh, what was it, uh, one of the islands of Portugal. It was pretty nice there. We're thinking, okay, okay, we have all these ports that are promised to us, all these nice, uh, nice ports. We're gonna get our blue nose again, which I was looking forward to, our service ribbon. Never got that. Because the minute we got out there, we went through the Suez, which is amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Suez is beautiful. It's very strange to go through. And they have murals and towers for everything. They have a mural for both of the Evergreen, or Ever Given, whatever, uh, both, that's actually both ships. Uh, that one that get me around, wow, my glasses are bent to shit. Sorry. <clears throat> squirrel um, and going through there was interesting I stood a few watches uh, got a few good pictures taken of me so that's pretty cool this is gonna bug the shit out of me oh, fuck it I'm gonna take these off for a little while they're actually bent huh so um, we went through and uh, we got shot at very frequently go after I'm not gonna give you exact dates except for uh, the one where we got um, we almost got our shit rocked <laughs> this is all stuff that's um army bay public I'm not gonna say anything that's too to disclose but uh let's see on my ship we have the distinction of having a bunch of firsts in the Navy's history we are the first ship to have hellfire kills with our uh, SH-60 uh, Romeos. Uh, we are the first to have a confirmed Sea Wiz interception of a cruise missile. First to have an ESM uh, take out a missile. We all we are one of the one of the first ships to uh, launch. Actually, we have the I, I can't see so. Uh, we have the, the largest amount of missiles launched per ship. We had to uh, restock, I think, twice. Uh, that was interesting. But because of all the stuff going on, most of our ports were just kept to the pier, which sucks. Uh, we went to the Suez, I think... Uh, One, two, three, we have four times, which it's a long process and uh, the terribleness of uh, not having toilets. Yeah. 
unfortunately for me, the first well, the first one went through. I it was during night. I slept through all of it, and so that didn't affect me. The second time, uh, we got our schedule pushed around, and the uh, engineers didn't have a chance to uh, pump down. So uh, we lost toilets within the first quarter of the Suez. Uh, that was an interesting one. Yeah, XL was extra pissed. Once again, this submit that was put loud and proud that you could hear from the shore of the Suez. So, uh, second time, same thing. Third time, we got very close. I mean, Gatorade bottles were king. I mean, there's a common joke with Marines and the Army and SEALs using Gatorade bottles. Yeah, yeah, we rocked it. Uh, I came close to using a bucket, though. So that was interesting. Lucky for me, my birthing was not the one which uh, which was the primary head. However, uh, it my birthing was cursed. We have a fuel leak that's still not fixed. It's over a year, actually two years old now. Uh, we have dr drains that do not pump. We have to keep on calling it in, because otherwise the entire uh, birthing floods out with uh, shit water. I would say gray water, but in this case, um, I was corrected twice by engineers. No, that's shit. And I, I can confirm when you see toilet paper go past you. Like, okay, yep, that's shit. One time, before the deployment, my entire rack got filled up and I had to wash everything. I nearly lost all my hard drives and stuff. Not fun. But this one was a little better. Like, when we went to, before this, Barbados, oh my god, it was a foot of water of just shit water in the birthing and nothing they could do deal with it bad times were had I'm not gonna go into detail on that one but back, back to the other way so we took a few uh, a few cruise missiles that were launched at us uh, a see, bomb boat uh, UAVs constantly uh, for me even though I'm a QM I actually was a uh, in a unique setup, I was sent down to the air deck to go and be crash and smash, where I also did the refueling team, where I also did the hot seat, and I was uh, triple qualifying every qual I can get back there. And it was a, a uh, fun time, uh, except the cruiser just kept on giving us the vampire ops. Vampire meaning flying all night. Sleep in the morning, but... You, I, I'm not sleeping in the morning. I have watch, so I'm getting. I, my sleep was like two hours, if that. Not fun. From there, um, we made one port in Bahrain, which I was out there for three years, and it was interesting to see. I ran into my old Chang, which was the funniest thing. This guy, Interesting guy. I, me and him would butt heads originally, but afterwards he was a lot calmer. Pretty nice guy out there. Just we had a weird event where my uh, so the old Chang did not have either warrant. Uh, he did not have a Facebook, or he had a private or something. I don't remember which one. But uh, my old CO found his wife, the uh, the Chang's wife, and saw a picture of him, printed it out like, hey, look at this guy, and. Chang was pissed. <laughs> but yeah, it was fun seeing him. We BS for a little while. The barring changed a lot since I've been gone. I couldn't go out in town, unfortunately, which I would have loved to do. But unfortunately, that was not in the cards because of the political situation of everything going on. Right after we left, though, they released that you can go back out in town, so yay. There, back out. We did so many. 68 days of the deployment. <laughs> like, we dealt, we did two months without seeing a port. Like, it was fucking the hell out of me. Uh, without seeing a port, and, um, the biggest issue people had, they lost their music. 30 days at sea without having a signal, all you guys' phones, gone. Might have to do a video on things you might want for your deployment, but 
I had a secret for that, and that secret was... Oh, let me grab it. Okay, this is gonna be very hipsterish for, for nowadays. What the hell is going on here now? Okay, uh, I didn't unplug it right, so it's not happy with me. Or iPod. <laughs> and uh, again, hipsterish. I have a Zoom. Now, these things were king. I have quite a bit of songs. I was actually buying iPods. Before deployment, I had like six of them on board, and I would rip the music off them, put them onto a drive. By the end of the uh, time on board, I had amassed so much music off these things. I sold like like all but one. This is the only one I've left. The uh, you can see that the big unit, <laughs> and it lives up to its name. I actually upgraded this thing to make it uh, more reliable, and I also. Uh, I took something that I saw from another YouTuber, Dank Pods. I put it in a solid state drive. And I'm not playing music, but if you look at how many songs this thing has on it 19097. Yeah. So, people were loving this. People were like, why have an iPod? Oh, I, one of the fu funniest things that happened out there. So we had a guy who unfortunately, uh, while going through the BAM, which is going around the fucking, uh, that was it. Shoot, I forgot. Where the Houthis are, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the name. But, um, going down through there, uh, we had a situation where they, uh, made sure that we, no one brought their cell phones out. So, nothing had wireless, so like this was it had somewhat of an issue. I had to have it in the airplane mode the entire time. Actually, this thing got cooked for a while. I lost like four different watches, the only that actually lasted. Cooked means, mean, well, it fried out. We had a spy radar that was going, and it was. It likes to take, take, out, uh, like, take out watches. This thing somehow survived. I'm happy with this thing, so whatever. Uh, so, we're having a, a meeting on the mess decks, and uh, like. No more devices. I'm like, what about iPods? You have an iPod? But then I pull out and like, like three I had in my pocket. And they use these as a thing like, you can't have that, but you can have this. Which again is comic gold. I got stopped once because I was up on the main deck listening to my iPod. Got yelled at by some chiefs. Like, hey, CMC said it was, said it was fine. So, I, uh, Went down and speak to him because I can, you know, cover my own ass. Ooh, double chin there. And, um, yeah, they said not, just don't use it for that one time, but I was fine afterwards. <sighs> but yeah, 68 days was terrible, and people were coming to me for music and shows and such. I have a TV tuner capture, and, uh, I, was I took a bunch of shows off the TV. Uh, which, uh, that's really helpful. It's like having a VHS tape, well, DVD, just digitalized, so. Yeah, the old-fashioned way. Just digitalized. So, that's how we kind of survived that. Uh, however, my digital books was terrible. I use a uh, webcomic thing called Tapaz, and um, I had to keep on turning back the clock on that, which made things very annoying. Like my watch was glitching out from that one. Uh, yeah, I really wish they had a feature for that. Uh, then the big day, February 1st, I think it was. Actually, no, let me go. Let's see, New Year's Eve, we took our, I think it was like our second or third uh, missile inbound, which I sleep next to a ding, uh, next to the, uh, the tubes. And I think it just went straight up. Like, you can, you know how many we launch every time, especially forward. Back half, not, not too sure about it. That's too far. But I heard every single launch. And, uh... It wasn't the noise that would wake me up and terrify me. It was a silence. 
because when all of a sudden you're you're used to hearing the sound of fans going and just standard things going on around the ship, and all of a sudden you hear nothing. That's terrifying. I was uh, having problems, a lot more problems, sleeping. I managed to subside that by uh, having YouTube playing. I have YouTube Premium, which has worked out really well for me. Uh, I listen to like Red Stories, uh, Karma Comic Chameleon, Ripe, and a few others, R Slash, and uh, that helped. I get the uh, multiple hour conf uh, multiple hour uh, compilation videos. Put a little 3M tape. I don't have that phone here right now, but uh, stick it on. Actually, that's not here. Stick it to the top of my rack and uh, let that be right there, and that helped me get through the deployment quite a bit. Uh, we have pictures of my wife and kids hanging up my newborn daughter. I, I missed her birth. I was, uh, she was born in January and I was, uh, right in the middle of it. So, that was hard, but seeing her for the first time was, was amazing. Uh, that, I'm jumping ahead, I'm sorry. So, from there... Uh, the big day, February 1st, we, t we have a missile coming towards us, and, uh, yeah, that was, a. Uh, I was in the, the hangar for this, so I'm about to launch the helo, it's out on the, on the flight deck, and all of a sudden I'm putting on my, my carrier, and I'm about to walk outside door, and I'll start, start hearing missiles launching, what, I'm like, what's going on here? So I'm about to go check outside, have my cranial and everything, and all of a sudden, Sea Whiz, which uh, it's not called the close in weapon system for the close in weapon system for nothing. That was the one that came within a nautical mile from us. I'll never forget that moment because I am at the door about, about to undog it and go out. I backed away from that door in a heartbeat and people started running back in. Had my phone cracked. Uh, long story with that thing, but... Yeah. Came back in, um... And then we started getting the gas from the missile, the SM2s, which are launched intercept. This time they didn't really track. You have to thank God for the Sea Whiz. It's usually called the Captain It Won't Shoot. Because that would have been a bad day. I was not fully terrified until the next day where my legs were shaking. I deal with stress really, really well. For the most part, we just have a bad case of the shits. No, but that the next day, my legs were shaking. I was weak. I, I had... It was like growing pains. It was the weirdest thing. I felt like I was 13 years again, and my body was just like growing up, and now it was like three times worse. So, from there, my mind was kind of, my anxiety was at an all time high. I was dealing with things on board the ship, which I won't dig into. But shout out to the chaplains of the Navy. That, that was a saving grace. Especially Chaps Alexander. That man. Mm. So, moving on. We got shut up a few more times. Uh, one of them was our last transit. And we never even made it through the BAM, as we call it. Uh, we got shot at beforehand. And uh, from there... About face, like we were supposed to man up a uh, ready, a, a more higher alert in the ship. I can't remember exact terminology, I'm kind of just out of it right now. And uh, name it there. There was so much confusion. I, I, don't, I don't blame anyone on board, it was just a lot of stuff going on. We intercepted it, it was done. But that became our very last uh, transit to go through. We also passed by the wreck a few times of the Ruby Mar. First saw her, she was, uh, you can just see a good chunk of her bulbous bow. 
Then you can just see the chain over the bulbous bow. That was it. That was that was something. Then the other. Then we have a few other ships get hit. Whew. I'm sorry. I'm a little tired. But um, yeah. From there, we uh went through the sewers our last time. And uh, that was surreal. Like we we had already been told we we get sent once, twice, but be back back in May. And it's we gotta get back to the, the midpoint of fly. And that was difficult. We went through a lot for this deployment. Uh, we ended up getting a uh, uh, the Navy unit commendation at NUC, and we got our common uh, combat action ribbon, which was. Unique. We are one of uh, five ships now to get it. Uh, some I don't really agree with, but <laughs> is what it is. I'm not uh, higher up. I'm an 11 year in the E4, so yeah. For now, that's the thing. Higher tenure is no longer a thing. So from there, we went to Greece. Uh, that was our second time going there. Uh, first time I got the phone. A phone that I can actually call my wife and uh, kids and be able to tell them, hey, I'm okay. Which. I'm definitely recommending keeping a deployment phone. Put your good phone away, put it in a box, put it in a corner, don't touch that there shit. Just let it, let it be, back it up on your last port in, in, uh, at home, transfer all your stuff over to, to a burner phone. I have a little uh, Motorola now, uh, G20 I think it was, and it's got twin SIMs, so I can buy a Bahraini or a foreign import SIM, keep my SIM in, and have the service of both. So. That works out really well. And I never knew, I never fully believed we were going home until I saw Cape Henry Light. Cape Henry Lighthouse was uh, where it finally said that I was going home. And that's within the first, the couple of hours before we were actually at home. I, the entire time I was half expecting, hey, turn around, go back. Because at this point, to quote the show Malcolm, Malcolm Middle, I expect nothing and I'm still disappointed. <laughs> but we, we made it back home. A lot of things changed. I changed dramatically. I'm a little more quick to stress now. Uh, I'm not. I, I snapped my daughter the first time. My eldest one, my youngest one, I, I can't get mad at it. She's, uh, <laughs> she poops, drinks, and and get, makes adorable noises. My eldest, though, was uh, refusing to eat, or in this case, she was t messing with my study notes. Trying so try to make, put E5 on, but um, yeah, she, I, uh, <laughs> and she did not like that. So, and I felt bad. I felt like a piece of shit. So, I'm still learning, I'm still waking up at night, just... Try to remember where I am for a while. The, the the bed difference definitely helps. Going from a cozy bed on back at home to a uh, hard spring bed definitely uh, it gives you that weird feeling of being home. But yeah, but yeah, that's kind of the story about what happened with us. It was a, uh, a historic deployment. Granted, we did do a lot of shit. A lot of first shit. And that's something I can tell my kids about. And I joined the Navy to honor and memory of my grandfather. I have a piece of his, his ship, the USS South Dakota, which had a bomb hit or kamikaze hit, and he kept peace. And I have that peace to this day, sitting in his memory box right next to me. But now I have something to add to that collection. I have bits of the cruise missile that was launched, both in offense and defense, one with the serial number, sitting in my box. And that's something I'll pass on to my kids.
I know I'm just a guy who was there. I did my job. That's all it was. There's nothing grand or fanatic. We just kept the have a good fight and did our job. But that missile. Fear of God. And the saying, there by the grace of God go I, as we pass by the Ruby Mar, definitely shows what could happen. However, we're a lot, we have a lot more manpower, a lot more damage control equipment, so I know we would be able to stay afloat. But uh, the last time the U.S. Navy uh, had ship hit, <laughs> that guy did with the Phallotrician we nearly factor reset that. Well, we just about did. We sunk half their fleet. And their oil rigs. The only one country that really fucked with our boats. Man, it's still around. And surprisingly, that's, that's uh, North Korea. North Korea currently has the USS Pueblo. Which, uh. is, act, is still commissioned in the US Navy. It's just captured. And built in 1943, it is the oldest ship with a uh, with a power plant. Now, I didn't the Blue Ridge and touch that one. That thing is old. But she's not a man, so she's kind of like that weird limbo area. Anyway. I'm gonna cut it off there. Thank you for staying with me, guys. Thank you for subscribing and everything. Thank you for listening to me rant. I uh, did this to keep you guys updated and for my own uh, coping. This is something that was recommended to me by the chaplain. Talk about what you, what's going on. Talk to anyone. Die documented. This way, it's it puts a little levity on. It puts a more of a Hey, it happened. We're past it. And cope. So, hope you enjoyed the story. I'm going to post another video just on uh, things you would want to bring with you to the fleet. Like things that are for, um, for what's the word we're looking for? For, uh, for your own wellness. Because uh, being on a ship, especially if you end up in a situation like I was in, you're going to want some stuff to help keep the sanity going. But, thanks for watching. I'll try to get some more car views you guys soon. The F-150 I'm still working on. My wife's car, actually. Blew the, the uh, transmission. Don't know how, but whatever. But anyway, talk to you guys later. Have a great day.